KWH brand has been a standout on the near side shoulder of plenty of racetrack stars and now one of the toughest and most genuine two-year-olds you'll see is coming home to roost. Hills, you do a fabulous open day sort of weekend of open days and it's a really good part of the world isn't it the lovely undulating hills it's great for the livestock and you know really good to see people coming out to support Kitchman Hills yeah thank you Carolyn thanks for coming out too it's uh yeah it's different it's a different sort of farm and probably always had that little bit of a different feel to it in some ways but we, we normally do have a, a sort of a night where we sort of aim everyone to turn up and but like Graf and Dubious, people sort of know the horses now, so we just thought we'd just throw an open weekend and like I said, we'll just, uh, you can turn up for breakfast or through mid-morning or lunch or in the afternoon of viewers, whatever, whatever suits, but but it is, it's a beautiful sort of aspect and lovely farm. And of course, Kitchen Hills has a great record of producing stars with that KWH brand, Pierata, who's now down at Yulong in Victoria, yes, 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 an Everest winner, now a stallion Ellsberg, an Epsom winner and a new stallion this year. It's an outstanding record. We have. We've. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to take praise for it. Just one of those things that we've been so lucky to be involved in. You know, we've got great staff and and obviously these these hills up here and whatever's in the water's working. So <laughs> so it's uh, very proud to be a part of it. It's it's an amazing. Been some amazing results. Covert ops in front from Dubious is ticking on well. Dubious, of course, new to you. It's really great when they come home with that brand on their shoulder, isn't it? Oh, it was something that. He was a lovely, lovely foal. He was a lovely weanling. He was a lovely yearling when we sold him. He was a high price yearling. And uh, to get him back was just a, a great result. And uh, I've got to say, it was great business. Michael King was awesome to deal with on behalf of Aquas. And, uh, and you saw him here today. He looks amazing. He turned up in great order. They've always looked after him. And, and what a job they've done. Like he's, he, I think he covered over 400 mares before we got him. So. Massive, a massive chance his horse gets, and uh, obviously he's been well received everywhere so far. Yeah, and the temperament—he just takes everything in his stride, doesn't he's he? He's just so relaxed. Like we—I remember Billy, our stay man, who everyone knows. Billy, uh, when we when we first bought him, he was at Aquas, and on his way to here, I said, "Why don't we just take him to the the May mare sale at the Gold Coast?" And Billy's, "Oh God, please don't do this." <laughs> anyway, he got off the he got off the truck and walked through. You know, there was three or four hundred, five hundred mares at the sale. Never batted eyelid, just wanders about, and and that's you know, a huge tick to his temperament as a whole. I know when you speak to Kieran about him, I think he, he started his first prep as a racehorse as a yearling and it was in work pretty much 12 months later, and, you know, after winning the, you know, the Breeders' Plate, one of the fastest Breeders' Plates ever, yep. um, which holds, you know, it's a race that so many good horses have won from Stitzel to Capitalist to Vancouver to Sebring and then to be in work all that time and, and obviously be a, a group two winner at the end of that was terrific. But GBS has quickly dashed up on the outside of Zarsam. As your breeders play, second in the Magic Millions two year old classic, third in the Todman. He won the Champagne Classic in Brisbane. So really right up there as one of the best two year olds of his generation. And then of course in the Kingsford Smith. I mean that was incredible as a two year old to those battle hard, you know, the Bostonian against the older horses. Yeah, no, he just and and it's like Kieran said, he just never left an oat. He never went Shinsaw. He just had this amazing temperament and amazing attitude and brain for it. And I think that if I think about what makes stallions, like you, you look at I'm Invincible, why is he so good? And you look at Schnitzel, why are they so good? And so many zoo star and those stallions. And I wonder if it's just because they can produce a horse with that temperament in big numbers. So they can handle that work and be in, in work for longer under the, under the pressures that Australian racing throw at them. But Dubious was certainly that. His stock looked like him, they act like him. Um, we've all tried to buy them. Like, there's not a stable that didn't get one at the sales. You know, they were. It, he blew everyone away. Like, I think he averaged 220 grand at the major sales off a sort of 12 grand service fee. So, that that doesn't happen off uh, great advertising. That happens off him advertising himself, and, and that's what he's done. Well, absolutely, and of course, by not a single doubt. So we know, you know, in his later years, he was such a dominant sire with, you know, Extreme Choice, Golden Slipper winner Farnan, Stay Inside, a Golden Slipper winning grandson. So there aren't many not a single doubt stallions around, are no, there? No, there's not. And uh, and we're wrapped to have this horse, who, like we just talked about. He's done all of that, and I've loved not a single doubt. Whether it be, you know, his yearlings at sales, or whether he had one to sell, like like Jubius. But he's mares now, like he's, 
we've got a lot of not singled out mares here um, that have actually we've sort of chased for graph when of being an outcross stand but it, his mares have just producing these lovely yearlings like beautiful types and it won't be long those champion stands become champion broodmare size and and then like it's just it's one of those side lines that I think we're going to talk about for a long time not a single doubt. And Jim is himself like he's a, you know he's a sprinter he's not he's not overly big or but he's just you know the muscle and everything's in the right place isn't that beautiful you know the hind leg the lovely black points oh, he's just gorgeous. I just had James Mitchell here just came to have a look at him you know he's booked a few mares in and he was just saying how his hocks are really low and he just drops his head and walks and his action's phenomenal and like I said he, he was sought after as a yearling and he sold well and his progeny now have been sought after well like you just hope they just keep ticking the boxes I hate to say that but he he just get, does keep ticking the boxes in every way so and his fertility's good so he's got big numbers behind him it's it's just it's like a little sort of time bomb for, for breeders it just feels like it's going to go off so hopefully it does. Alpha Oro Fabagino grabbed by Graf. Graf, of course, your other stallion here at Kitchman Hills. First yearlings coming through in 2024. And we saw a couple, we saw three of them today. Yeah, lovely horses. And uh, he, he's just a different horse, really, when you think about it. Like, not a single doubt, obviously, produced a little bit lack of height and you know, good length and strength. Where, where Graf's by Star Witness, who's a big, strong horse. And there's only one other son at the start at Star Witness called Star Turn, who's doing a terrific job. Um, this bloke's owned by a terrific bunch of breeders, like some of the biggest breeders in the country, and like Australian Bloodstock, uh, Max and you know, Whitby, Neil Werrett, Steve McCann, uh, Colin Madden, Kitchwin Hills. So there's a lot of good people behind this horse and gives him every chance at stud. So no, he's, ex he's an exciting horse, he's got some lovely mares, and, and as you said, those three yearlings, like one's out of an all too hard mare, one of those yearlings, and uh, who's a, a, the mare's a daughter of Mormista, who was a great race mare. Uh, Tabasco Kitten was the Redoute's Choice mare that had the graph we saw wandering around on the lawn. Well, we sold a Pierrata out of her for half a million this year, so that's a lovely mare for him to get. Um, and, and out of a not a single doubt mare, as we talked about, uh, just a lovely lengthy colt that's going to grow into a lovely yearling for Magic Mans. They're three nice Magic Mans horses that are going to support the stand well. His bulk, I mean, he's just so strong, isn't he? He's a machine. His <laughs> hip goes on forever. You know, he's, uh, he's just got that beautiful forearm and great head and just... Yeah, just he. I know what Stan's need look like. It's just like he, he is that sort of what you'd look up the dictionary and see a Stan would be him. And this is the exciting thing at this time of the year. Some people might not have seen them, of course, you know, coming through COVID or whatever, you know, with Graf. And, you know, these these stallions, for people to actually see them in the flesh, it's so, well, to see them on Brent to Win, obviously, is great too. But to really see the size and the bulk and what they turn into, it's so exciting this time of the year to think what they can achieve in the future. And that's right. And, and like, how good is it that everyone can come up to the Hunter Valley and all these farms showcase all their stands, all their farms as a whole and show and show yearlings and foals of these of these young stands that have just had their first lot of foals on the ground it's terrific for the, for the hunter as a whole and and even have you guys come around have a look at our boys and and all the vis visitors that we'll get but like you say you can get up close to these stands and you see them on tv is one thing but when you stand next to them to see the sheer bulk of them and, and the breeding season's around the corner so they know it and the testosterone's high and everyone's ready to rock so it's a really really exciting time